Okay, people. So, where we were? So, we started with this definition of T decomposable graph. I think these margins have become wider. So, we can write more here. Okay. So, what was T decomposable graphs? So, we redefined our T decomposable graph definition. And what was the rede redefinition? We said let G be a graph, okay, H be a vertex subset, okay, H be a vertex subset or that is H is a subset of EG and I do not know why I like green and W be subset of vertex set of H, okay, okay. Subset okay. rather for all H. Let's write, let's write it correctly, you know, otherwise for all H subset of EG and for all. Now, this is important, right? And for all W subset of VH, okay. there is a W balanced separator in graph induced on H, which basically means if here is your H, okay, you will be able to find there is a W balanced separator in GH of size at most T, okay. Then you will be able to find a set S and what is the property of this? If you look at the any for any connected component, component C of G of H, if you look at the C intersection W, it is at most half, okay. So, this is what, and so we were, we were trying to work on this family of curve and our idea was that, okay, and why did we came up with this definition? Our main idea was that we were trying to come up with this separator S and then look at the connected component and uh, we wanted to recursively make trees of this, we found difficulties, so we put added this and we came up with one correct decomposition and that one correct decomposition was that, hey, let us take S, look at the connected component here. So basically, now in every partition of this, we will add S. And whatever you take partition, you will add that to all its descendants. But the problem with that approach was that it was making the associative bag very big. So we said, why are we putting S everywhere? Maybe if in one corrected component S goes only a small, then I only have to pass that going forward, right? So that is the idea why we came up with this definition, okay? No, S, because what we were adding? Look, we were decomposing, we were decomposing, suppose, right? So here it was, we were S, maybe something, something here, something here, S is sitting here and here it is W and here then you get X, here you get W, here you get S. So like as I go down, I keep on adding separator to my central object, right? So this is becoming big and big, right? I do not want to do that. When I make connected component, I only, I want to, move that S which is in this connected component. What is the point of moving all of these guys here? And that was the whole idea. And that we wanted in a sense to ensure by coming up with a separator that not only separates N, I do not know, I do not care about that, but it separates S appropriately, okay? That was our whole goal, okay? Now I wanted to claim or I wanted to, I will prove to you that this is good enough, okay? Okay, so this is a which we like to prove, would like to prove, okay. Every T decomposable graph graph, okay, has a decomposition Tr, comma F 
of let us say bag size, I will tell you what bag size means in a minute okay? or decomposition T or F has a decomposition T or comma F such that A for all V in V of T R, F of V is at most something, okay? at most something, we will come to that, we will come to that, what it is, we will fix that, why? Okay. Let us call this alpha okay, which is definitely some function of t. Okay. I am interested in some function of t. Alpha is some g of t. So, huh? what? Some function. Right? So, my idea will be that look, if graph is too small, I should not change it. I mean, if already something is too small, why want to break it and unbreak it? So, if something will be too small, all I care about this point of time, fb should be less than equal to alpha, right? So, I will say if my current graph has size less than equal to alpha, what should I do? I make a single node, okay? I make a single node in my tree, okay? Single node tree, call it r, okay? And what I associate to f of r, whole of vg, <coughs> right? Can definitely it satisfies. So, I am going to inductively build my tree, right? So, if my, if my graph is too small, I just put them together in one bag, okay? Now, what do we know? G is a T decomposable graph, right? Okay, what is this? G is a T dec and right. So G is a T decomposable graph. So I find a separator S. I find com got component C one, C two, C L. Okay, I got this. Okay. Okay, but you notice the way we were trying to construct, we wanted that we did not want to construct decomposition of C1, C2, Cl separately and add this S because that was causing a lot of trouble to us, right? So, we actually wanted in the morning that the right graph where I should find decomposition is Gi, which is graph induced on S union Ci and not only that, Look what we were trying to mimic. S is in the root bag, right? So then, not only that, I want a tree decomposition, or let's not call or decomposition T i such that. Look at and suppose it has decomposition T i f i such that f i of root i contains S. This is what we wanted in the morning, otherwise it was causing lot of trouble, right? So, we want this guy to contain whole of S, right? We wanted such kind of things, okay? So, we need slightly more stronger way of doing some induction or whatever to construct this object. So, let us say this, okay? So, what I am going to do, have a decomposition of this and this is what actually would like to follow, but we will prove something more stronger from which it will follow. Okay? So, what is the more stronger we will say? Okay? Okay? Okay. So, here is a slightly stronger theorem, stronger. I am saying Let W be any 
subset of a T decomposable graph, okay, WB any subset of T decomposable graph G such that cardinality of W is less than equal to alpha, we will again fix this alpha, okay, say alpha 1, then there exists a decomposition and by decomposition I only mean where I can do my independent set algorithm. Okay, that is all that I mean for now. I mean because I have not defined what decomposition. I am just trying to fix some decomposition and see what happens. Right? I want the property that you know all the edges are here and there and I can do my independent set. That is all that I am trying to do. I am trying to come up with a decomposition of a graph where I can solve maximum independent set problem. That is all. Okay? Then there exists a decomposition tr, f. Okay. Okay. Such, such, such that for all v, f of v is less than equal to alpha, and the w which you have given me is subset of f of r. Look, I wanted all these guys to contain s inside. So, I make my generic problem where I gave you some w and say, hey, look, give me something, some decomposition where this set is contained inside the root bag. Now, if that is a primitive which I have, then I can ask him, hey, give me a tree decomposition here where this s is in the root bag. You understand my point? So, that is, my, that, that is why I have strengthened this. I am saying, I am not looking. You give me any w. Right? So, in particular, I will and I have to prove this for any w because I do not know what set s I will give this inductive algorithm to. If it uses some special property of that set s, then I do not know how to handle this. But this inductive algorithm is going to take a graph, a subset of some particular size and going to return me a decomposition of some particular set size. Okay. Now, notice some things are very clear. The size of W1, W is contained inside. So, alpha 1 has to be less than or equal to alpha. So, this, I mean, this forces us that some condition that alpha 1 is less than or equal to alpha. Maybe bigger, but how much bigger? We do not know. Okay. Now, I look at is Vg less than or equal to alpha? I again do is Vg less than or equal to alpha, right? Suppose if it is written if, okay, then I will, I can still do Fr equal to Vg and Vg contains W because it is a whole thing. So, this is perfectly valid. So, my induction step is perfectly valid. So, if the graph is small, then I apply this. If the graph is big, I will find some decomposition and do something about it in life. Otherwise, G is a T decomposable graph, here it is, okay. And now what will I do, okay. So, what is this, this guy takes input? If you look, it takes a graph G and set W, right. And what does it returns? It returns TR comma F, right. This is what it returns, where F is a, where F is a function from vertex set of TR to the power of vertex set of G. Now, I would like to do this here. So, what is GI? GI is graph induced on S union CI. And I would like to pass GI comma S. Okay. So, now look, W is less than or equal to alpha 1. So, now what is it going to give me? It is going to suppose if I am able to do things correctly, it is going to return what? It is going to return T i comma F i with the property that F i of root R i contains S. This is what is given to me. 
why that is true or why that is not true, I do not know. This is what I would like to do, okay. But But if you notice, this is not what is given to me. I am given to me G and W. Look, S comes and all this comes, that comes later. But first, you are given a G and W. And what is your premise? You want to find a decomposition wherein the root W is contained inside this. So I cannot do anything at such. This is why I have. So, what is S? S is not anything. S is a W balance separator. S is a W balanced separator. Why? What was we trying to mimic? Whatever goes here should be divided nicely so that they do not distribute exactly like this. Okay, so S is a W balance separator. What is the property of this? W intersection C i is less than or equal to W by 2. Do you agree? Okay. So, at this point of time, you know what will I do? I will <coughs> notice. So, my G i is going to be G S union C i. Okay. But what should I pass him? Look, what did you just now told me? You told me, look boss, everything that W has, when he goes back, that should pass on. So, what should I give him here? W i and union what? Whatever I am planning to take now. And what I am planning to take now, what should? Look, whatever may be that separator, it should contain W, no? So, at this point of time, so and I will call it, I will, I will construct this WI union S. Go, give me this, okay? Now, you come up with, so first of all, why this is true? Why will this happen? But suppose I give this, it gives me TI, FI returns, okay? Now, I will make a root and what is F of R? In S union W, put them. Okay. W I. Oh, I didn't define W I. Oh. This is W I. W intersection C A. Okay. So this is what it is. Now I have my root R. Here I have my tree T I, R I. Okay. I take R, make him adjacent to every root. And what is the property of I? It contains what? S union C I. No, no. W I. That is it. Everywhere. Okay. So, now this is it. But suppose I was, I was trying to show this existence of this construction using induction. right? Then I must show to you that V of G i is strictly less than V of G. 
Otherwise, I cannot apply this induction. Right? I need to show. Right? If I want to apply induction to get this construction, I need to show that the the object on which I am trying to apply induction has size strictly smaller than which I started with. Right? Because I know for any such ob and I must maintain certain property about W i W intersection i. That is, I have to show to you this and the parameter W i intersection s is less than or equal to alpha 1. Otherwise, I cannot show this. These two things, otherwise I cannot apply induction. My induction hypothesis takes a graph G, a set S of size at most alpha and gives me some decomposition. So now, if I am passing this, Sorry. you are right, it should be union. What the set is? I did not follow the W I union S, how come? Meaning? What you did not follow? Please tell me, I will explain. Look, what is the property of S? It, it takes, it here are portions of W's here, right? Now, do I need to add the vertices of those W which has gone here in any of these bags here? There is no point because this W is completely in the connected component here. So, there is absolutely no point. So, the only thing which is of interest to me from the top world which is coming is those guys who has gone inside this connected component and that is completely captured here, right? That is completely captured here. Union. W i by definition is W intersection C i. So, it is just C i, right? W CI are just connected components after I delete S, which has a property that if you look at in look at what is is a W balance separator. That is it. So, these are connected components which contains at most half of W in any of them. No. Why it will be? Imagine I have 10 vertex, I have deleted some, this 10 vertex got distributed everything. W is much smaller set than the whole graph. This is whole graph. Read. Let G be graph. Now I am applying this theorem with G and I given a W. There is a W balance separator in GH of size at most C. And what is the definition of W balance separator? Look at any connected component and look at, I, I, I retold here that it contains at most half the vertices of W from here. So this is a connected component. W is contained inside here, no? Oh, then, then if you are adding the whole of S, then you are also adding the whole of W to every CI. No. What no. What did I do? Please, F of R is S union W, F of root. But what did I give him here? I gave him W I union S. But you are also saying that W is contained inside S. That, that condition W is... Contained. Where? Fine. Last line. Such that for all V, F, B and W is subset of F of R. And here F of R is S, right? No, F of R is S union W. That is my definition of F of R. The root, I define what all vertices goes in the root. So, I look, I am defining my decomposition with the help of S, right? I told you in this graph, give me a root give me a decomposition where the root contains W i union S, here, here, here. Now, I have to make a decomposition for the whole graph. How do I make a decomposition for the whole graph? I add an artificial root R, make him adjacent to everything and I define F of R as S union W and for everyone else. So, this is my tree, which has been, which F is basically concatenated with F1, F2, FL and for the root, I have told you what I will define. But to apply this, I need to show that the premises of my induction hypothesis holds, which means that the graph G i is smaller, which means W i union S is less than or equal to alpha 1. Otherwise, I cannot apply this. Right? Excellent. So, W i union S, 
what is the size of S? Is T decomposable? So size of S is at most T. So it could be T. So first of all, what I want? Wi plus mod S should be less than equal to alpha. This is what I want to show, right? Alpha 1. This is what I want to show first. Wi plus cardinality of S is less than equal to alpha 1. Fine. Wi. So leave this. I know this is less than equal to w by 2 and this is plus t. So I want this to be less than or equal to alpha 1. Okay? So this is first thing which I would like to show. Secondly, what I want to show? I want to show v of g i is less than or equal to v of g. Okay? If w is large enough that its half is strictly less than w, then clearly one vertex of w is here. If w is large enough such that half of w is strictly less than w, suppose I am able to prove this. What does it mean? It means there is a vertex of w which is here, which is here. Is that okay? No. Vertex of W could just be here. So I need W to be large enough that its half is more than what this guy can accommodate. Right? Look, look, I want some vertex to belong here. Then only I can say that this is smaller. I want to show that vertex set of G i is strictly less than the vertex set of G. What is G i? Is this part. Right? I know that W gets distributed. If I tell you that W definitely, C2 definitely contains one vertex of W. If I show this to you, then definitely this graph is strictly smaller than my original. But to do that, where can W be accommodated? W can be accommodated here. So, size of this W should be larger than T for sure. So, that gives me a lower bound. Okay. So, T has been accommodated. Now, it should be large enough that if I do its half, it is not going to be here completely. So, for example, if I choose W to be 2T, for example, will it work for me? No, because its half is at most T. Right? So, maybe all T has gone here. Right? You understand? Because what is it? Every connected component contains at most half of the original thing. Fine. T went here, T went here. But if I write say W is 5T for example. Now, yeah, you accumulated T here. How much will you accommodate here? 2 t. No, 2.5 t you can accommodate here at best. But 2.5 t and another t is how much? 3.5 t. But I have still lot more. So there should be someone here. Right? So you have to choose W large enough. Okay. So the number which will, if you do some maths, okay, the number which will actually work. So let's fix alpha 1, I will fix alpha 1 is 2t plus 4, just some number. Why? Now let us see what is its half? t plus 2. Okay. So the, what is this size? Is t. What is this size? Is t plus 2. So 2t 2 plus 2, I have 2t plus 4. So I have one extra vertex here. And this is true about any component. Right? If I take this and this, it can only be 2t plus t and 2t. 2t plus 1. What it can contain? t plus 2 plus t. So 2t plus 2. And I have 2t plus 4. So for any size, so this is fine. Great. Okay. Excellent. Is 
this is what I want. Huh? What? It's integer. Look at one. But these are vertices. So I, if I did this, do you have a, then you cannot always say this. Look, what did I say? I said, if I say this is strictly less than W, it's not always true. Some floor selling. What was my, what was my reasoning for this? Is that if this is true, then maybe I will have an extra vertex here. Okay. If you're confused with that, just forget it. It doesn't matter. Okay. You want W to be large enough that you look at any GI, you are guaranteed that some one vertex of W has gone over somewhere else because that will imply that the vertex set of GI is strictly less than vertex set of GI. Okay? Okay. So, what is the size of S? We are adding at most T, no? So, 3T plus 4. Right? So, I will put alpha 3t plus 4. So, alpha 1 is 2t plus 4, alpha is 3t plus 4. This is it. Okay? So, now what will I say? If Vg is less than or equal to 3t plus 4, do this. Now, hmm? I just added t. because size of S is at most T, I am choosing this. I will give you such a decomposition, no? Huh? Look, I added S union W, no? So, this guy's size will be how much? 3 T plus 4. So, if, I mean, this is the best I can hope for. And I am telling you this best I can achieve. Okay? So, what I do? This is it. So, if my vertex set is less than or equal to 3 2 by 3 t plus 4, yes? What? I got it why I, de why I need. Look, look, I need something, right? Look, here is a t. Look, if I fix alpha, alpha has to be greater than or equal to t. Right? I want alpha, whatever this number is, strictly greater than t plus alpha by 2. t and here I only am guaranteed that it could contain alpha by 2. I want my alpha 1, sorry not alpha, alpha 1 to be more than this. If I do this equation, what will I get? Alpha 1 is more than 2t. T, I don't know, some ceiling floor. Maybe it is enough. I don't know. If you are going to fight for plus 1, plus 2, all I knew that you need to strictly more than 2T. Maybe with, I mean, okay, there are reasons for writing plus 4, which I am hiding it, of course. But, but that's not important. Because you are not going to get this T. You will get T plus 1. Do you understand? I am just saying t, 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 but it is, you are good to get t plus 1. Then what will happen? Then you will also get t plus 1 here. Then what will happen? This is what you will get. But why confuse people for things which we do not know? Okay? Does not matter. You are right. For this, maybe t, some 2t plus 1 will be enough. But you know how I am going to get it. Right? I am not doing any magic. I want this plus whatever is here gives me one extra so that I can say this is less. Okay, but here is the catch. G is T decomposable graph and I get a W. Okay, if this is less than this, if the vertex set of less than this, then I do this. But you could give me W, but for my argument to hold, I actually use the fact that W 
is not too small. But who knows you pass me W which is too small. Right? Then what I do? I just arbitrarily make, look, for this argument to hold, I assume the fact that W has this size. Right? Exactly equal to 2t plus 4. Otherwise, I cannot make this argument. But when you are passing this W, you could give me, because look, what I am passing? W i union S. W i could be empty for all this, you know. So, S is got is t now which is going to act W, then I cannot argue whatever I argued before. So, what I, what I should do then? Then I will check. Then I should just add, if cardinality of W is strictly less than 2t plus 4, make W tilde, which is W union, arbitrarily added somebody says, such that W tilde is exactly equal to 2t plus 4. So, you just arbitrarily add somebody says, and make it exactly equal to 2t plus 4, it still satisfies all this condition, right? Of course, it contains w because it contains w tilde, so I am happy. This is all that I wanted, right? So, every bag here by induction has size 3t plus 4 and one bag which I constructed has 3t plus 4. Great. So, this is my decomposition, whatever this decomposition theorem was, okay? Now, let us write down the properties of this decomposition. I told you how will I decompose. This is exactly. So, look, I wanted to do some things and uh, I ended up coming up with a decomposition which is quite interesting, right? I just go, I decompose, I just go, decompose. And why did I had to do all this business? So that the back size does not increase. And why did I think it will not increase? Because when I break, my object which I am passing also spreads. So, why should I put unnecessarily this object to every bag that I create, right? I should not. I only pass on those things which he does. So, suppose we have this decomposition. What are the properties of this decomposition? Let us see some properties of this decomposition. So, given a graph G, I have told you given a T decomposable graph G, I have told you how to get a TR and a function, which function is from V of TR to 2 to the power VG, okay. And what is the property? For all V, side of FV is 3T plus 4, because, right, I just run, to do the prove this, I just run this with any W subset of size alpha 1 and then I will be done. So, I have done this, okay, properties, first, union of V, okay, let us, I will use T for TR, okay, this is not right, otherwise we will get confused, okay. So, I will use T for trees and V for the vertex set of my graph. Okay. Okay. So, if I go over V T R and look at F of T, this is equal to vertex set of G. So, every vertex appears in some bag. By induction hypothesis, I could have proved this property. Do you agree? Right? Every vertex, look at a bag here, it contains every vertex. Agreed? It contains every vertex here. So, clearly those guys have been taken care and the vertex which appears just in, in fact, I do not need this S union W to say this because every vertex here W S W 1 is in some F here, S W 2 like some vertex of S and some other portion of W is in F is in some back corresponding to F 2 and so on and so forth. So, this is definitely true. Secondly, for every edge u comma v in E g, there exist a t in V t such that uh, u v is subset of f of t. So, for every edge u v, there is a bag that contains both u v. Okay. Let us see why this is true. Okay. Do you see why this is true? 
again prove inductively no look what is this g s union c i where are your edges your edges are either here or here here right but that is considered here those edges these edges here are considered in this 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 so down itself has all these guys right so the, w to whom which components w does not have any neighbors here what was s was a separator so these are connected components so the only edges are are here here or going across okay third property okay so t is my tree for all v in vg okay let's write down t such that v is an element of f of t okay let's call this set tv or let's call this lv what is this all for every v in vg look at lv what is lv all those nodes of your tree which contains this vertex okay claim lv is a connected subtree of t they are connected we did all this hard work just for that purpose okay how do we prove this how do we prove this look at look at any vertex which only appears here only appears here like look at a vertex which is here in this connected component here clearly all those vertices are connected in each pieces fix a vertex v which is just present here not in s right so it is connected here right that vertex doesn't even appear here so i mean so so if a vertex is completely contained inside some ci then by my induction this is how i have got my tree so this is connected nothing to worry about only thing which i have to worry about is a vertex in s okay so look at look at a vertex x in s what is a property here it is connected what is a property here it's connected what is a property here it's connected what did i do i made a r which contains s union w so and what is an additional property wait and what is an additional property not only it's connected it's part of the root root is also r1 contains so this connected subtree contains r1 this connected subtree contains ri because this whole premise give me a subtree where s is in the root so i have made such a root and what did i do next i made r where i contain s and i added him so now uh, now in this bigger tree this set also contains r so this is connected no done this is done which one Okay, you are right. Maybe for all s, f s. That's okay. Hmm? 
okay. So we proved this. So what is the property of this decomposition is that every vertex appears in sum, every edge appears in somewhere and the guys are connected and we made them connected on purpose. You know why, why did we make them connected? This is exactly the property which we were trying to propagate. Oh, if this set S appears, then let us put it him in all the guys. So it is like if I go somewhere, okay, I do not get disconnected. I just go, 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 go. Okay. Okay. I am going to rub this, keep this not so very clean picture. And let us look at some properties of this decomposition, some more interesting properties of this decomposition, the way we have constructed. Okay. For look at S, look at for any S in Vt, R, right? Here is your S, right? Here is your S. What is the property of G minus F of S? <laughs> that is not the what it is, it is a connected component. If you delete this, look at the vertices which appears here. So, suppose S has V1, VL and we had a notion of graph associated with VI. Let us not call it S1, SL. Remember that we had notion of graph associated with SI was union over, right? She will not like me but okay, fine. Uh, S star descendant of less than equal to, let me write SI, right? SI is at the top, so it includes SI now f of a star, okay? this is the graph B introduced. Okay? This is the graph B introduced. Okay? So now what you can show and which is this is from just by our construction, look at this. What I am telling you? Look at, look at this graph and you delete S union some W's, whatever is remaining, right? there cannot be an edge from anybody to anybody. This is by definition, by nature of our construction because S acts as a separator. Right? S, every guy is a separator for the remaining guys. Right? So, here there are no edges, no edges between uh, GSI minus F of S and GSJ minus F of S. Whatever the common guys could go there, I have deleted them together. Right? So, this is exactly why, what I did. So, now a vertex can appear in many places, but I have put them in a way that when I look at this, this is exactly like our first decomposition. What was the first decomposition? By definition, if you deleted it, you were getting a connected components. I still have maintained that property by, I said, whichever guys propagate anywhere, it is also here. Whichever guys from here goes here, here is also here. And why that is true? Connectivity, connectivity, connectivity propagation of a vertex is by connected. So, if I am here, I am also here, I am also here and I am also here. If I am here, right? And I am the only people and what else is there? I am the only people who can go anywhere else. This guy is the only people who can go anywhere else and I go in a connected way, right? First of all, I am the only person who can go to other components. So, if, I, if you remove me and you are removing some more guy, of course you are true. And this is true about any point of time. Okay. Question. You have any question, Ryan? Okay. Okay. So this looks DPable. Right? And
okay okay given a graph g tr comma f satisfying 1 2 and 3 is called tree decomposition of j okay and what is the width of tree decom what is a width of tr is max okay and now you will see the value of plus 1 why i was doing all this garbage is max of f of uh, s in v of tr max of minus 1 you will see in a minute why okay this is for historical reasons okay width of a particular tree decomposition and what is the tree width of a graph so what should be the tree width of a graph yes okay so now we can rub this all for maximum weight independent set okay look my whatever i drew last time was not a was not an algorithm was just an existence of a decomposition because i did not tell you how to find this balance separator and anyway that is w1 hard didn't i prove it yesterday so no hope no hope so we have to do something smart right i proved yesterday that that is w1 hard so i mean i cannot I even more harder but I have a constraints on W. So, if I put W equal to Vg then I have the same constraint no. Then this is much more general problem right. Nothing like those are forget about those things first I gave you this give me a balance separator of size at most t give me. I give you a graph G, give me a balance separator of size at most T. First of all, look, up until now I promised you that I am working on T decomposable graph and blah, blah, blah. I mean, if I give you decomposition, I can do an algorithm. That is a very different thing. But if I give you a graph G, you should tell me, well, look, either I make you an algorithm, right? Or I tell you that this is not a T decomposable graph for sure. Here is your witness. That is the most robust algorithm that I can think of. You give me any graph, either I succeeded, then this that is great for me, I do not care. But if I failed, I gave you evidence why I failed. That is like much more robust algorithm, right. But here, if you give me decomposition, yeah, sure, I can do lot of things. But who gives you this decomposition? I mean, if I really want to use it, I must be able to construct this decomposition. And that I do not know yet how to go about it, okay. But we will get there sooner or later. So, first let us define tree width. Okay. I mean, I could have started my class with this definition and then you would have forgot why did we do all this. But you know all this, why we did all this hard work, right? Why did we all do all this hard work? It's just to do maximum weight independent set. No? Okay. But having said all this, okay. If I am teaching an algorithm course, I will teach this very differently. If I am teaching a graph theory course, I will teach tree with very differently. And if I am teaching a kernelization course, I will teach very differently. Because you need different properties of these things when you need those like thing. So, read kernel book after this, read FPT book after this and get different perspective on tree with. But one thing which will be common, the guy separates. Okay. So, keep that in mind. There is somewhere some separator hiding which we should make use of. Okay. So, what is the tree width of G? Very simple. It is minimum over, okay. It is minimum over, okay, TR being a tree decomposition of G and width of TR. So, among all tree decomposition, I check 
among all tree decomposition, I take the one which minimizes the width. And what is the width of a tree decomposition? Look at the maximum back size, subtract the number one. Okay. Good, got it. So now let's familiarize ourselves with the definition, like right? this abstract definition, right? What did I prove? If a graph is T decomposable, then definitely it has a tree, tree width, it has a tree decomposition of width some 3t plus 4, okay. So this is, we proved this, right, okay. This is a theorem which we proved. Let G be a graph that is T decomposable, zable, then G has tree decomposition of width 3t plus 4, has. We do not know how to construct that, but it has. What about the other way around? Look, I define what your decomposition is, okay. So I claim, here is a claim. So this is what, let us play with the definition now. So another lemma. So this is proved, this we proved, right. So what is the relation between this T decomposable graph and this tree width? So let us see. So here is another theorem I want to write. Let G be a graph of tree width T, then it is T decomposable. Look, I am not saying it is if and only if, right? But they are quite close concept. If it is T decomposable, then it has a tree decomposition with 3 to 4. But I am saying if you are a graph of tree with T, then it is actually T decomposable. You know why? No. But now tree decomposition is this definition. Okay. And now I have to prove that graph is has tree, let G be a graph of tree with T. It means it has a decomposition of this nature. That is all that I know. But I have to show, what did we show? So I have to show, I gave you graph H and set W in this. Then W weight, I mean you have to decompose H with W. So first of all, delete all other vertices but H of the graph, okay. Delete all, so for, for let us just do it for Y, H and W. Let us do it when H is equal to V of G, okay. And then we will see how to play around with and you give me W, okay. But I know something very funky. For this graph has tree decomposition of width t, okay. Then I will say it is t plus 1 decomposable. I should not say t decomposable, it is t plus 1, right. Ek to extra add karna okay, okay. So what I do, so it has a graph g and this is tree tr, okay. I claim or Forget about this, let us prove this much better claim. Given a graph G T R and weight function on V G to R positive from V G to okay, there exists a vertex S in V T R okay, such that such that every connected component, every connected component of G minus F of S has a uh, weight, how much? Weight of V G divided by 2, okay. Suppose I prove this, then I am done. What will I do if I prove this lemma? Then I am done because to prove this lemma, I can apply my again, I will take my weight function from Vg to R positive greater than equal to 0 or R positive. So when I say R positive, you should be, what I will do for every vertex V in W, put weight of V equal to 1, 0 otherwise, right. Clearly, if you find a S 
such that every connected component contains how many half the this and what is the it's just one s right but what is the sign of f of s is at most t plus 1 right because t with is f of r so t plus 1 so if i prove this lemma then i am done this and we are we have we have proved this lemma thousand times so let's do once more okay, okay. here is a tree I ask ourselves, are you that vertex? He is not. Like, are I ask, I ask, are you that vertex S who does this job for me? Why? Because there is a component where weight is larger. Okay, fine. So move your token there. That's it. There's no more. So there would also vertex here also it's vertex it's just that this vertex correspond to some t plus 1 vertices in my original graph but argument doesn't change no okay so this is definitely true for like for t in the definition of t d completely if i replace h equal to vg then definitely this holds but we have to show that it is true for every so what will we do if a graph has three decomposition so let's prove this so we will not so I want to prove that if tree decomposition is very robust property. Okay, so what I want to show to you, uh, lemma. Okay, uh, let me see how many of you can see this. Let G be a graph of tree width. Okay, let G be a graph of tree with T. Then for every vertex subset H of V G, tree width of V tree width of graph induced on H is at most T. How? Take this tree decomposition, delete all other vertices. It is also tree decomposition of what now? V H, right? It satisfies all the properties of V H, right? Every edge of was there, so now it is there. Every vertex of H is there because we kept them there. And every vertex of them was connected before, it is connected now because I did not do anything to the tree. And back size can only decrease, no? So this is fine, okay? Fine. So, or the best way to show this. The okay, tree width of G minus V is less than equal to tree width of G. Sure, I delete a vertex. Tree width of G minus E is also less than equal to tree width of G. If I delete an edge, why will I tree width? Right? Just keep the same tree decomposition, no? Right, it satisfies all the properties. So, like deletion of edges, deletion of vertices does not increase the tree width. So, they it is monotone in that sense. But what about? Contracting an edge. What about the following operations? I am doing some basic primary operation on so that our hands are free. So suppose I have G and I contract an edge. So what is the contraction means? You look at UV, you make edge UV and delete, make him all. If there are parallel edges, delete. Okay, delete parallel edges. What do you think? Will the tree width of this? Well, I'm, I didn't say anything at all. Okay, so this is slightly more. So now I have G and I have TR. Okay, and now I have to make from here. G contraction E some T R prime. Okay. What I do, look, U V was an edge. So there is a bag that contains both U V. So just replace U V there with U V. And whichever bag contained U or V, replace them with U V. And I claim this is your. 
and why connectivity property is satisfied? Look at the tree of U and look at the tree of V. There is an edge where U, v, U and V appear both in the back. So they are connected. So this guy is also connected. So either I delete an edge, delete a vertex or I contract an edge, my tree decomposition does not change. Okay? Extremely robust properties. I still have not done maximum weight independent set. And I will probably not do maximum weight independent set because I am tired of doing maximum weight independent set. Okay? Okay. So, what is, what we know, okay? So, we proved closed under vertex deletion, edge deletion and edge contraction. What is the meaning of this? If H is a minor of G, then tree width of H is less than or equal to tree width of G. So tree width is a minor closed operation. Excellent. Okay. My claim. How many edges a graph of tree width T could have? Could it be anything? Okay, excellent question. No, don't guess. Don't guess. Don't guess. Okay, question. How many edges does a graph of tree width T could have? Natural question and you said it could be anything and okay. So, so it depends on the following operation okay. I have a graph G okay and I get a tree decomposition TR what okay and I have a yeah TR comma F okay. Suppose G has VZ number of vertices, okay. Let us call that N. Now, it is actually VTR times at most K square, sorry, T square. Do you agree? So, if I can come up with a TR with small number of vertices, then the number of edges could be much smaller. Agreed? Right? I, in the worst case, I could have T square edges because I have a bag of such t, right? At most this many edges because every edge is present somewhere, right? So if I can come up with a tree decomposition where VTR is less than or equal to VG, then I am great, no? If I can come up with a TR where VTR is less than or equal to VG, then definitely I will be able to show that the number of edges is at most n, t, n into t square. Agreed? Okay. No, 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 I am just. The question is can we come up with this? You are given a tree decomposition. Can you come up with a tree decomposition where number of vertices is small? We will get there. I am just asking some simple questions. But suppose if we are able to prove this, then we can actually reduce this bound to much smaller. You know why? Okay. Not, maybe not. Okay. Let me define a notion of I say a tree decomposition, a tree decomposition tr comma f is simple okay i am defining a notion of simple okay 
okay. A tree decomposition is called simple, okay, if the following happens. If for any two distinct nodes S1, S2 in TR, what is the property? Neither f of s1 is subset of f of s2 nor f of s2 is a subset of f of s1. Okay. This is what the notion of simple tree decomposition is. And we can show that simple tree decomposition has a property that the number of nodes is this much. But it is a simple tree decomposition. So now let us look at a leaf of a simple tree decomposition. We will prove this, do not worry. Leaf of simple tree decomposition. I am just telling you some interesting facts. Look at a leaf of a simple tree decomposition. It has some set of vertices. I claim to you there exist, look, look at a bag, look at, this is a leaf, look at its parent. Clearly this guy is not contained inside this. So there exists a vertex here which does not appear here, right? There exists a vertex here which does not appear here. It means he never appears anywhere else, otherwise connectivity pro pro property will be killed. So what is his degree here? It has a t plus 1, so his degree is at most t. So let us delete this vertex of my graph. A graph still has tree with this. So I still find a simple tree decomposition. I will find another vertex with degree how much? t. Delete it. You get my point? Or you didn't? Look at a simple tree decomposition and look at a lay. I will find, I will show you, this is, I will always find a simple tree decomposition, okay? And the simple tree decomposition, forget about simple tree, I will find a simple tree decomposition for you. Forget about how many vertices in the simple tree decomposition, but it has a very good consequences. Look at a leaf vertex. I know this guy is not contained inside this. It means I have a vertex here which does not appear here. It means this vertex, since he does not appear here, he will never appear anymore because otherwise my connectivity property will be unsatisfied. So then all the neighbors, as all the edges incident to him is inside this bag. So all his neighbors are here, right? Because every edge appears somewhere. It means degree of this vertex x is at most t. Delete this. Tree width has not changed at most. Now again for that graph, I can find a simple tree decomposition and find another vertex with degree. So I can keep doing this. What does it imply? This graph is T degenerate, right? So I can get a sequence V1, V2, Vn, so that everybody sees at most T edges this side, right? It means a, gra a tree with T graph is T degenerate, which implies what? How many edges it has? N T edges. But if T edges, at most N T edges. So, if it is T degenerate, what is its colorability? T plus 1. That is it. So, it has some very nice properties. We will discover some of them more. Okay? But we know why we reached here. Right? And since the way we reached here, it has starts to have nice and nice properties, which is exploitable for various things. Okay? So, let me stop here. Okay.